Hello viewers, do you want to fight eldritch beings, solve murder mystery, and cancel the apocalypse as bunch of magical occult high schooler? Say hello to Breakfast Cult, a tabletop RPG about a group of students in a totally normal high school that suddenly isn't very normal, made by Weird Age Games, which has also made Hardwired Island, I made an intro video on that too, you can check it out up there. It all started somewhere in the late 21st century, when the digital age has passed for the Weird Age, where magic is very real and in fact very scientific. This is where the foundation comes in, who have established the Occulter Academy, the top occult high school in the world to teach students with occult potential to be at their best. In fact, student life at the Occulter Academy is great, there's so many benefits to enjoy there. But you might be asking, what's the foundation, why is the academy built on an island, what about the world beyond, why are the students not allowed to leave, well, why are you asking so many questions in the first place? But, there's a reason for all the secrecy, humanity is not alone and there are things out there that want to eat your face, or the planet, and while it's very hard for them to get in, it's very easy for someone to let them in. On some days, the normal suddenly isn't, and you as the student might need to find out who or what is causing this, and when you do, well, the problem won't solve itself. Breakfast Cult runs on the Fate Accelerated System, which is a simplified version of Fate, and no, it's not that fate. Basically, you first narrate what you want to do, then roll four fate dice, or just any normal dice, and then add up any bonus you have for the final result by comparing it with your opposition. This is essentially the basis of just about every single roll you will make in this tabletop RPG. You can also use fate points, which you get three of at minimum every session, for many things, like invoking an aspect, basically something integral to a story, which can be literally anything. By invoking an aspect, you can increase the result of your roll or even use it to oppose an opponent or aid an ally, but it has to matter narratively. If you run out of fate points, you can also earn it back by accepting a compel, an aspect that makes your character's life more dramatic or complicated, like knowing that one of the teachers is secretly a cultist in the worst way possible. A compel must be something that will make a meaningful impact to the plot, it can't be something weak and easy to shrug off. Of course, you can do this in reverse by using your own stockpile of fate points to negate the compel, but if you run out, you must accept the compel. This system essentially let the player control the plot and drama of the session to a certain extent, and by earning fate points, you have more choices in making certain roles more impactful, especially when it really mattered. Anyway, I think that's enough talk about the rules, time to break them with your own character. To create a student, other than having a backstory ripped straight out of a cliché anime show, you need three things, aspects, approaches, and stunts. The aspects listed here are character aspects, which basically defines what your character is about in five categories, like a burnt out magical girl or something similar. Approaches are what actions your character are good at, separated into six types, careful, clever, flashy, forceful, quick, and sneaky, you don't need fate point for this, you just add one straight to a roll if it fits narratively, even when you don't want to. And finally, there's stunts. Stunts are special traits your character has that changes how an approach or aspect works for you. It could be something simple, like for example, I call this menacing aura, plus two to forcefully overcome when slowly approaching people. You could even make something more specific and special, as long as you tackle on more requirements like requiring fate point, being usable once per session, and other things. You could check out the fate system reference document website or the pre-made characters available in the book for some ideas, but ultimately, as long as your game master agrees on it, your stunts are good to go. And speaking of pre-made characters, this book comes with a bunch of them you could use as player character or NPC, like Rin Tanaka, a totally absolutely normal high school student who keeps having weird shit happening around him, oh. A sugar-powered genius who can deduce any mystery as long as she has enough glucose in her vein, and Teresa Mykurita Steiner, what the fuck kind of battle tech fanfiction is going on here anyway she's a part of the all-powerful student council. Because it won't be a high school without a student council so powerful it's basically a dictatorship, or literally, and many more others. You could, of course, give your character ability to use magic, because, well, this is a magical high school after all. From Sorcery 101 to Alchemy, Bloody New Type to Five Rings, just have one of your character aspect to be about what occult style you know and you are basically good to go, honestly the specific detail about the styles doesn't matter, it lets you do whatever you want in a way anyway. Oh, what's this, outer science, you shouldn't be looking at that, 
If you know anyone else know about it please let us know so we can. With your characters created, it's time for the game master to shove your characters straight into mystery and danger. In the book, there are five types of otherworldly all-consuming ancient ones that are all trying to get to our dimension because some dumb ass is always trying to summon them for nefarious purposes. This includes, the cold ones, left over from previous universe trying to convert the new one for them to live in, false idols, godlike but not quite godly beings with immense power and appetite, Yamatai, an ancient twisted society machine that wants to bring back the glory of an ancient land, Bukai, who are definitely not cute monster girls and they now want to come back, and capitalist. But you know what's more fun than fighting an enemy you can face, having to guess who is working for the ancient one, I'm talking about agenda. Agendas are essentially secret aspects some students or characters might have to represent ulterior motives, secrets, affiliations, and other goals that could complicate the investigation. As players, you need to figure out what these agendas are, and sometimes, they could even be just red herring that has nothing to do with the actual plot, or a hint to an even bigger conspiracy ongoing behind the scene. In fact, NPC isn't the only one to have agenda, you, the players, might even have agenda of your own assigned by your GM either randomly or as a part of the wider plot. How you deal with agenda of your own is up to you, just keep things fun for everyone involved. There are multiple ways to play with agenda in the RPG, the default setting is just half the player character and NPC have agenda, or go with paranoia setting where everyone has an agenda. Half and half setting instead have half of the players being actual cultists working to get the deity of the week out, but nobody knows who is on whose side, so basically among us and finally, there's the protagonist setting, where one person, the protagonist, is the only one to not have an agenda, everyone else has agenda and could openly discuss it with each other as well as on whether they will be helping the protagonist or not, while protagonist will have absolutely no idea what the hell is going on. Either way, it's gonna be fun or hell to figure out who is on whose side, you will need to keep your mental game up, or you might find out who is truly beside you the whole time in the worst way possible. And that's all I could say about Breakfast Cult. Honestly, it's really up the game master to set up the proper tone for their game, the ancient one should feel scary and unknown to the players until they slowly figure things out, but how scary is up to the GM, so basically the difference between playing Persona 4 and Persona 2. Other than the base game, Breakfast Cult also has two expansions, Game Over adds in Cybermancy as another technological magic, school factions in Occulter Academy, and more ancient ones to deal with. Sweet Shove and Hella Though Tep is a th mythos themed expansion, that's basically all you need to know, it also features the ghost of fucking HP Lovecraft that you can now punch or go ghost busting on his ass. You can get the book and expansions on itch.io or drive through RPG, but if you don't feel like buying it and you still want to try it out, you can get Peer Pressure, a free rule primer with a sample scenario for you to run with some pre-made characters. Who knows, try it, read it, it might or might not fit you, but you won't know until you do. Anyway, that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.